Hey, what's up, guys? I'm sure you guys remember this from the simplest way to make a 555 uh, video that I did a couple of weeks ago. So I've gotten some interest in this circuit, and I thought in this video I'd show you how to design your own PCB, get it made, then we'll solder all the parts to the PCB and have this as a permanent circuit. So just in case you're unfamiliar, I'm gonna go over this really quick. This is a 555 timer here and it is in um, <laughs> bi-stable mode. So it's on and off. And that rate is controlled by this capacitor right here. So what we can do is we can change that capacitor for different values and that will allow us to change the frequency and the duty cycle there can be controlled from that uh, potentiometer. I'm just looking for another cap here. Here we go. See, in this case, the duty cycle is so fast that it's running faster than the eye can determine. So anyway, you've seen this circuit before. There's no need for us to harp about it here. Let's be bop on over to the computer and we'll design this in a PCB. Okay, I've got Easy EDA open, which is a web-based PCB design software. And you can use any PCB design software you're familiar with, but you know if you don't have one, you're just getting started, then you know you're the guy I'm making this video for. And in that case, just go to easyeda.com. We're going to start with a new schematic. Okay, so here we are with a nice blank page. We're going to come over here to our parts. I'm sorry, our, our library. And from the library, whoops, let me close that window. We're going to start out with a 555 timer. So just type in any 555. And we're going to get our 555 timer. So you click on it, and then you drop it on the screen. Then right click. So here it is. Here's our timer. And you can see it has all of our pins. Everything there is good. So the next thing we need is our timing capacitor. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to bring a timing or just a capacitor out here. So there's our timing capacitor. And then we're also going to put in an LED. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to bring out an LED. And then we need to rotate that. So I'm going to click on it and then come up here and click rotate right, rotate right. So there we have those. And the final thing that we need is a potentiometer, which we're going to bring over here. And there she go. Like that. And we're going to rotate it as well. So this time we'll just do a flip horizontal. And then we just need to make sure we're lined up. So there are the basic parts of our circuit. Now we need to start connecting things together. So we come over here to wiring tools and we're going to get our wiring. And we're going to start here with pin 6. Come up here. Pin 6 connects to 2. All right, then we're going to come here from the wiper of our potentiometer, which connects to pin 7. And then pin 6 connects to one end here. The other end of our potentiometer connects to pin 8. It's 
just like that. So now we also need to connect pin 2 to our capacitor and pin 3 to our LED. Whoops, I screwed that up. Now, there's no worries. Just click on it, hit delete, and redraw the line. Just like that. What the heck did I do here? What did I? Okay, that's the one that connects to two. <laughs> oh boy, I screwed this up. Okay, let's click on that there and delete it. Delete it. Try and. All right. Let's do this again. And see, that's the, that's the beauty of this. You don't really have to worry too much. Because if you make a mistake, you can just come in here and correct it. Boy. And I make plenty of mistakes. Come on. Can I get rid of this now? Ay, caramba. Let's try it again. So, six. Connects to two. And that connects here. All right, there, we got it this time. And then we need to connect three to there. Right click twice to get out of it. Okay, so six is connected to two, that's all good. Next, we need our VCC, which connects to pin eight. And we'll wire that up just like that. Oh, really? Did I screw it up again? You guys must be laughing your butts off. Okay, and then a reset pin also needs to connect there. Okay, so there is basically our wiring. We need to do one more thing, and that is we need to bring in our ground and wire our LED to the ground and also the capacitor. Okay, so there we have or, oh, nope. Guess what? Missed one more thing. All right. Now we're done. So there's everything wired up for our simple 555 circuit. Now we can come up here. And I just got to remember where it's at, where it's at. I think it's under miscellaneous. Yes, convert project to PCB. Our new schematic, we'll just call it our super simple 555. Okay, so now it's going to bring up the PCB editor. Okay, so we have our PCB editor open here, and you can see we have our layers, we have some drawing tools, and we have our parts. So the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to bring our 555 timer here. And then I'm going to rotate it right. Maybe bring it up a little higher. About like that. Then I'm going to come over here and grab our potentiometer. Bring it up here like that. And then I'm going to totally miss clicking on the capacitor. Bring up the capacitor here like this. And finally, the LED. I'm going to rotate right. Yes, right. And it goes a little something like that. So now we're laid out. And the next thing we need to do is actually draw our track. So I'm going to zoom in here a bit. And we're going to draw most of these tracks on the bottom layer. So we click on the bottom layer and we get our track tool. And we just draw them. Boom. 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 Just like that. Pretty simple. Here. Here. There. And there. All right, guys, we missed a little bit there. The recording stopped, and I did not realize it. I apologize. But I'm going to show you what I did. I just added some text so we know the polarity of our input and the polarity of our output and a board title and I added some holes some mounting holes that's it pretty simple stuff right there so everything is done and the next thing we need to do is output this as a Gerber file. So we come over here to our main menu. We go to miscellaneous, Gerber output. And again, this is our super simple, oh boy, the type right, 555. We click save. I guess it wants me to do it again. Gerber output. Okay. Then we click OK. And it's going to bring up this next page. And right here, you see where it says download Gerber file. Click that. And you can see right down here, it will download our file. Okay, so that's it for this. The next thing you're going to want to do is upload it to a board producer. So we're going to use uh, JLC PCB. Well, let's go there. Okay, so here we are at the JLCPCB.com page. You're just going to click Add Your Gerber File. Mine's right here. It will upload it. Just takes a few seconds. And there's our board. Very simple. Any changes you want to make here, you have PCB thickness, color, surface finish, copper weight, gold fingers, um, material details. We're just using the standard FR4 whether or not you want them to put their little mark on it and save the cart pay for it and uh, that will basically be it takes about uh, 14 days to get it back and that's going to end this part of the video when we get the PCBs back we'll put everything together solder it up 
and finish our project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Thank you.